do I need to have my own truck for this? It, 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 you know, I graduate class and I got my CDL now. Do I get hired and they give me the keys to their trucks? Or they're like, you got to now go out there and buy a truck? Like, if, if I have a truck, am I making more? Like, what, what does that look like? Yeah. So, uh, again, it, it, it depends on what your goals are. So if you're, and, and the, 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 whatever, the answer is right, depending on the person. Like, whatever you want to do is what you want to do. So if you want to just drive a truck for somebody, there's nothing wrong with that, right? If you don't have the aspirations of being an owner and taking on all the liability of, of, of owning your own truck, right? Then that's fine. You can drive for somebody else and you can make a good living doing that. But if you want to take it to the next level and and and, and have an ownership stake in it, then yeah, it, you, you're you going to obviously have to take on a, a lot more. And, and that's going to be, you know, that's a decision you have to make. But what I always encourage people to do is, you know, learn. Education is the, education is the, is the key, man. You have to, and, and it's, it's always great. I think personally in any, in any endeavor to, to work for somebody first, right? Work for somebody like a lot, of, a lot of times, you know, people do, uh, uh, you know, men, men have mentors or, or they'll do uh man, it's escaping me. What do they call when you work for free for somebody? A, internships, uh, intern, internships, or even if you have a paid position, work for somebody first. And when, while you're working for, while you're working, don't get so caught up in the job that you don't forget to take notes and really study what's going on, study the processes, study the systems. If you get a chance to look at some paperwork and see what things cost, you know what I'm saying? Find out how those companies run efficiently. What, what are their inefficiencies? What can you improve on? Be in as much meetings as you can, pay attention, right? You know, when I was working, com coming up, working for corporate, working for companies, that's one of the mistakes I made early is I was so caught up in doing the job for them that I didn't pay attention to a lot of just the behind the scenes things that I could have been well ahead if I would have just stopped and said, hold on, let me just let me just pay attention to that and really study what's going on. Take some notes and just every day learn something new because I'm so busy being mad at just being at work, right? <laughs> I'm mad I just got to be there, right? I'm not taking the time and I'm not using the fact that I'm there to my advantage, right? So I always tell people like, when you start a company, start where you're smart. And I say start where you're smart, meaning start where you already have experience because in that experience is going to be your network, right? Because you already have people around you that do the same thing, right? It's going to be your customers because now you know all the people that they work with, right? So you already have customers when you get started for yourself because you're taking notes. You're, you're taking in everything that's going on around you. So you have to kind of like, it's, it's almost like having like an outer body experience, like get outside yourself for a little bit and look at the operation and figure out what's going on and what's making this thing work. And how are they getting ahead? How are they making their money? You know, do they have multiple contracts? Do they have one? Are they buying their trucks? Are they leasing their trucks? Are they buying their trailers? Are they leasing their trailers? When they have their trucks, how often do they send them for service? You know, when 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 there's a breakdown, what do they do? Are they having people come to the to come to the location of fuel, or are we going out to fuel? All these little different things is the game that you could pick up. That you're in it and you're doing it every day, so you don't think about it pro pro. Uh, consciously, but if you take your time and step back and look at it, you could be building your business inside of their business as you go. And then once you're, you're ready to spread your wings and fly, you're fully prepared because you've watched them fail. You've watched them succeed. You've watched all the different pieces come together and you know how a successful company works. So there's absolutely like a lot of times now, especially like social media, you know, people are discouraged to work nine to five. It's like, oh, you got to be an entrepreneur. You got to do that. You got to do this. And I agree that ownership is the key, but don't discount the power of working for somebody because you get to learn off of their dollar. Learn on their dollar. Take that time. And when you're at work, as opposed to being the disgruntled employee, have the attitude that, yo, every day I'm going to work, I'm really working for myself. They're paying me to learn. If you change and shift your mindset, You'll be in there picking up every little piece that you need to start your own business. And then when you start your business, if you're, if you're working for a trucking company, don't go and start a barbershop. Yo, start a business that could, that, could, that could either add on or add value or help within that same thing that you've already been doing. Because like I said, all the answers are right there for you already. 
You know what I'm saying? So that's what I think that's a big mistake that we make is we we have everything right in front of us. We just don't utilize it correctly. You, and it's all because of the way we look at things. It's all the way you go into it, the way you go into work. You know, so like there's a saying that says how you do anything is how you do everything. You know, you have to apply that same mindset to work when you're working at nine to five, even if that's not where you want to be. Just be the best worker that you can be and pick up everything that you could pick up during that time and make sure you're not burning bridges. Make sure you're networking, you're talking to people, you're meeting people and every relationship you have, you hold on to that because if your end goal is entrepreneurship, you're going to need all that. You're going to come back to all that. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be there for you because you've been building that all along. That's a part of your entrepreneurial journey by being the, you know, an entrepreneur. You know, working working for the company and learning everything you need to know to, to do your own. So, you know, I think that's really important, man. You sound you sound like Sean Prez, man. Like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you, you sound like you're about to take over the Power Move Maker podcast. You dropped so many gems just now. I'm like, like bingo, bingo, bingo. Everything you say and the stuff that I try to stress to our audience week over week over week over week. No doubt. Great answer. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.